All right, we're back wrapping up chapter 12, well, 12.3 and then and chapter 12 entirely. And then, uh, like I said, we'll get back into reviewing uh, for that AP test. So, yeah, this is exciting stuff. Lots of stuff we've covered. So, uh, again, performing a significance test. Let's talk about that just a little bit here. And, again, um, as we kind of look at our equation there, our statistic, our standardized test statistic, remember, um, just kind of a general formula, uh, putting it into the t-test for a slope, uh, remember that uh, we'll kind of, do it in this regard, okay? So what we're going to do is we're really interested in finding that p-value uh, by calculating that and, uh, and getting a t statistics that's either large, as large or larger in the direction specified by the alternative hypothesis. Could be less and could be greater than. And just remember that our degrees of freedom is at minus 2 in this case. And, uh, yeah, we'll uh, kind of look at it. And, again, uh, the formulas are great, but uh, using that calculator, again, tech video number 32, would be the one that you want to see in that tech corner shows it rear good and again we'll run through it in class and make sure that we know how to do that so let's take a look at a problem here uh, infants who cry easily may be more easily stimulated than others and this may be a sign of higher iq child development researchers explored the relationship between crying of infants four to ten days old and then their latter uh, iq test scores now a snap of a rubber band on the sole of the foot caused the infants to cry sounds kind of mean but uh they'll be all right <laughs> i guess the researchers recorded the crying and measured its intensity by the number of peaks in the most active 20 seconds. They later measured the children's IQ at age three using the Stanford Binet. That's the, that's, that's the one that's usually used for IQ tests, most reliable. Uh, the table contains data from a random sample of 38 infants. Okay, so there we go. Okay, let's get through it. Let's see what we got here. So um, here's the computer output from a least squares regression analysis. Do these data provide convincing evidence at the 5% significance level of a positive linear relationship between count of crying peaks and IQ. Okay, uh, okay, let's see. Let's see what happens here. All right, so here we go. State, we're gonna we're gonna say that that slope is is equal to zero, and uh, the, the alternative is that that slope is bigger than zero, implying that there is. All right, so the slope of B is uh, beta is the slope of the regression line relating Y is the IQ score to the X, the count of crying peaks in the population of infants, and we're going to do a 5% significance level. So let's get in the plan. We're going to do this t-test for slope. Scatter plot shows. Let's do our liner, right? We have to do that. Um, it is linear. Uh, no leftover curve patterns in the residual plot. It is independent. Um, 38, again, is less than 10% of all infants, so we're okay there. Uh, normal, it does look like we don't have any strong skewness or clear outliers in the histogram of the outliers, uh, or the residuals, I should say, uh, equal standard deviation. If I look at that standard uh, that residual plot, it, it's fairly equal. Uh, I'm going to scatter around the horizontal line of zero. It looks like it. And then, of course, random. Yeah, we had a random sample of 38 uh, kiddos. So again, we wanted to find the t-value and the, and the p-value really is the, is, the, is the thing we're looking at. And the note here is that because the p-value is for a two-sided test, uh, we're saying that's not equal to zero. Then, then there is evidence. Uh, there is a, then there is evidence for the null hypothesis. We cut the p-value in half for that. So because we're just looking at the greater than part. Okay, so that it defaults to the the two-sided test. So we got to cut it in half to make it the one-sided test. Okay. Now once again, this is something that uh, we can look at the calculator. I'll show you the screenshots on that. Look at that tech video number thirty-two uh, that we have posted. And uh, that should be a good resource. And again, we'll go through it in class too, if you're there. All right, so conclude. Uh, because the p-value is 0 0.002, which is less than our significance level of 0 0.05, we're going to reject the null hypothesis. We're going to say that there is convincing evidence of a positive linear relationship between the count of crime peaks and IQ score in the population of infants. And again, if you take a look at the screenshots from the calculator, uh, we're going to see those, that linear regression, TT, we're going to see that um, on here, um, again, using list one and list two, frequencies one. Notice uh, the key here is we're going to do, in our alternative hypothesis, we said it was greater than zero. And then when we do it, we get the output. Uh, it does tell us here, again, what the T-score is. And then P is kind of the big kahuna of what we're looking for in, in that case. So, again, we always want to take a look at that. Um, and, and doing that instead. So, all right, so that wraps up our section 12.3. Again, some fantastic problems on 835. 79 and 83 are ones you should take a look at. And then those multiple choice ones, uh, 87 through 92, always good. Help us prepare for that. And then 
we'll uh, do some preparation with the frappy and the multiple choice form of assessment we'll get those ready to go and hopefully uh, get that uh, chapter 12 all wrapped up and then we can begin our review for that AP test that's exciting stuff so all right good job guys uh, until next time I'm Mr. Rowan